Sasha. Where are you, baby? You know, they say it's the last free place in America. And it is, you know, for people that live here year round. People got places they can stay, you know, and, and they're safe, you know. We do have name streets. We do have neighborhoods, it's like a normal city, but we're not paying land rent. We can never pay land rent here. What do I need a city for? <laughs> can just live out here for free. If Palm Springs and Deadwood, South Dakota were to have an illegitimate child, it would be Slab City. And that's Deadwood, South Dakota of 1876, not today. Shrika. Shrika, where are you, baby? Shrika! Damn it, dog, where are you? My name is Robert Lane. I uh, came down here two and a half years ago to visit my best friend. And he wanted to trade his place for my truck. After thinking about it for a day, um, I decided to stay. So he took my truck and I got a home. I always start off with my hometown news. Even though I haven't been there in nearly three years, it's nice to be able to know what's going on in other parts of the world and know that people are the same everywhere. They all have the same worries and concerns that we do. Color of our skin doesn't mean shit. fuck around with children or threaten the children, you're gonna see my dark side. Um, I've even trained my dogs to protect the children around here. Last week, somebody had every last possession they owned stolen or burned. Um, it's what's known as slab justice. He was, he was a real asshole. He went to jail two weeks ago for threatening somebody and within 24 hours of him being in jail, all of his stuff was stolen and burned to the ground. Nobody called the police when the fire was immediately set. They waited till it was unextinguishable before calling the fire department. That's how hated this person was. So, there is, there are morals out here. They're just different. A lot of people have put a lot of taboo about it, but it's just like any other neighborhood, any other city any of that that you'd find here in the U.S., as far as I'm, I know. Where's that bag? That sounds like it's saying... Oh, okay. it's or shit. It's the same thing to me, man. Somebody took my fucking travel bag. I'm going to beat the shit out of them. Where's my bag? There's a fucking black widow there. Don't be putting your goddamn hand down there. Grab your fucking No, the black widow's right there. Have you seen my green duffel bag? My yeah, it's right here, bro. You, you just get that wrong impression, you know. 
I mean, I, if I looked at somebody like this that looked like me, I don't think I would trust him, but I'm the most trustworthy person that you'll ever find. I mean, you give me a thousand dollars to hold for you for six months. When you come back, you might get nine hundred and ninety-nine dollars back. You know, <laughs> I might I spend a dollar on some bubble gum that I can't chew. <laughs> Aha! Fucking buried. Ha! Ah. Hey, the wind stopped blowing. Ah. Oh. Life is good out here. Some hippies do shave, not very many, but some. I own a place called the Slab City Internet Cafe, the only public place in town for internet, electricity, and in the morning's coffee. coffee situation it's interesting he don't even like coffee I can't stand the crap it's the nastiest tasting stuff I've ever tried uh -huh. and I've tried it twice just to make sure he has never drank coffee he's gonna live longer than us <laughs> I can't even stand the smell of it the smell turns my stomach but my customers like coffee so I give them coffee in the morning he taught me how to make it his way. Will you really carry this one out? Ah, so great. Java loves us. Ah, so good. My day usually starts pretty early. In the winter time, I'll start coffee about six o'clock in the morning to get coffee out for the customers by seven. I wouldn't know if I make good coffee or bad, but I've been told I make the best cup in the county. Yeah, there's a lot of coffee in your mouth before you even try to take a sip. <laughs> I do coffee from 7 till 10 or 7 till 11, depending upon how many people are around. I'm open seven days a week. I don't have coffee all day long because it could uh, drink me dry. <laughs> I said I run strictly solar, but I have enough power coming off my panels that I can provide electricity um, up until a couple, you know, maybe two hours before sundown. I have no power, no lights, no nothing. This place, you can take your cell phone, you can plug it into a power cord, you can charge it up, you can do that with your computer too. And if you've got people you want to keep in touch with, well, you can get online, which seems to be pretty unique. I think he's got 
six or eight batteries over there and then a thousand watts of, of solar power so that people could come in there and plug in you know and then uh, all he's asking is for donations you know so that he can pay for some of that stuff you know rob's one of my best friends the cafe has always been uh, it's always been like a home for me home away from home you know uh it's probably one of my favorite places to hang out Pretty fucking awesome. It's a community. It's like a, a small neighborhood. Everybody out here is pretty much like family. Not everybody, but most of us. Damn, it's already 11 o'clock. God, this morning's gone quick. Charlie. Come here, Oh, Shrika. Shrika! Damn that dog. Shrika! Come on! You know, it took a little while to get used to the heat, but uh, it definitely beats cold. Less than 300 people live here during the summer. Um, Winter time, there could be as many as 2,000 people here. Um, but come June and the real heat, they're all gone. You're talking just the, just the people who can tolerate extreme heats. Which is a very hard thing to do for a lot of people that are coming out without the knowledge or understanding of this desert because it does get very, very hot in the summer. Uh, 125 degrees, 130 degrees, like we're talking, you know, 50, 55 degrees Celsius for people who can't convert. Hey! When it gets up to 125 degrees, I hardly ever drink during the summer because uh, the alcohol dehydrates you. So I do all my drinking when it's cool. <laughs> and get my get my belly uh, ready for the summer. I'm not going anywhere ever. No, in your mind. Oh, in my mind? Oh no, in oh. my brain. I'm here waiting on a bus. Don't you remember? Okay. Yeah, I'm here waiting on a couple of buses and the president. But that's never gonna happen. That's okay. I just want to sit around waiting patiently. I randomly found my way to Slab City. I was on my way to my friend's court case in LA and we ran into a friend that mentioned Slab City. So we made the way here. We were in a BMW and that car blew up. We traded it for a van, that blew up and we finally made our way here. I was traveling through when people were talking about this free place to live in the winter and we came out here to check it out. And we got, I fell in love with the place. I was like a snowbird. I would come down every winter over to uh, Arizona. While I was camped there, two ladies came up and said, George, you ever been to Slab City? And no, I've heard of it. 
you know, but I've never been there. Oh God, you got to go there. You'd fit right in. You'd fit right in the slab city life. Snowbird is a type of person who runs away from the cold, kind of like I did, but they only come down for the winter. And then as soon as the weather starts to warm up, they'll go back north to where they came from. I decided to change my life around, be wild and do the things they told me I couldn't do when I was a teenager and all that other stuff, rebel against society and everything. Got myself in legal troubles that sent me to prison for seven years. And in the last year, I've just gotten out of prison. There's no hostility. I don't think there's a single person in here that hates another person at all. I mean, it's been amazing. <laughs> it's been a long time since I felt this accepted in a random environment. Now I'm starting over my life as a single elderly lady. Paid my debt to the society and got out and came down here. I hadn't intended on staying uh, permanently. Um, there's, there's a lot of quiet moments, which is nice. I spent a lot of time in a big city. I enjoy the big city, but I also like the peace and quiet of the country. I don't know, just coming here, though, has really changed me in multiple ways, mentally, physically. Before I got here, I was honestly just hurting other people and myself because of what I was. And now I've came to a realization of who I am and what I'm worth. And I have Slab City and the people here to thank for that. Hey, come here. Now. There are no public utilities out here, so if you need water, you have to obtain it for yourself. You don't pay rent, but you still pay. You gotta pay for water. You gotta pay for your food. You gotta pay for your clothing and your laundry, and the upkeep on your dog, the upkeep on your place. You gotta pay for that. You gotta find a way to do it out here the best you can. Uh, one tank is between 270 and 300 gallons of water. That usually lasts three to four weeks. One of the great things about my place is I'm the only one out here that's got a, a shower that's got a hot water tank on it. and Everybody stops by and I gotta help them, you know. It's not really a public shower. You know, you do gotta come over and ask permission, but George is a nice enough guy that most people he'll say yes to. People come by and I charge them three dollars for a shower because I gotta burn my propane and then the water too, you know. I gotta run in and haul my own water, so three bucks is pretty cheap. You have to be very conservative with your water out here. If you take a shower, you take a trickle shower. You know, you wet yourself down, turn the water off, soap yourself up, turn the water back on, rinse yourself off. You flip a light switch and it turns the pump on and you take a shower. You can do a shower in less than five gallons. Um, that just means you've got shower water for another day. Don't use it during my TV time. <laughs> it's pretty cool.
Oh, you look so much better. I'll bet you smell better, too. I feel pretty. Hey, can you hand me my cigarettes? Oh, right so after? pretty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you don't look any better. <laughs> I give him his showers for free. That's, that's how good of a friend it is. <laughs> like it costs $3 to be my friend, yeah. <laughs> A good day for me is a slight breeze outside with nice sunshine so I can go outside and do my normal activities. I live out here in Slav City because it's awesome. I have three older brothers and one sister, four dogs. I work out here every Saturday picking up garbage off the side of the road. There's no more jobs out here to do except being a gas station worker or a food market worker. During the week I go over to school and basically do nothing except school stuff. Then I just go home and do my homework. Well, supposedly do my homework. And that's about it. I am still hoping to be able to go to the moon one day. I'm serious. I I've been wanting I've been wanting to go to the moon since Neil Armstrong touched down on the moon in 1969. I may not be able to travel to another star, but in five, ten years, I could very well stand on the moon. And I would love that. I want to be like a soldier in the U.S. Army or Air Force, somewhere around there when I grow up, because I want to just hear gun battles and see what it's really like instead of video games and movies. On the other side of the fence off of Canal Road here in Slab City, we have three military bases. We've got the Marines, the Air Force, and the Naval. And every once in a while you get the airplanes going over, you get the bombs going off, you get the firing, and the test sites is what it is. It makes it quite loud if you're not used to it, but you get used to it when you're out here long enough. Once in a while you'll see a cloud of smoke rise up off of the top of the mountain, and then like 10 seconds later you'll hear this boom, and the, the cloud of smoke will already be there, you're just hearing it afterwards. It's a, like delayed. Ah, <laughs> I like seeing the helicopters fly over our heads. What they mainly do in the morning is go really, really low and really, really loud. They're not supposed to wave at us. Uh, about a month ago, there was three of them that flew. They were flying real low over here. And I stood out here with a beer waving at them, and somebody hung out the door and waved back. I don't know if they got in trouble for it or not, but that was the first time in two and a half years anybody had ever waved back. So, yeah, it made me feel pretty good. They saw me.
you know how you sit around notes in like classes and shit, and yeah. the teacher tries to catch you and it doesn't work. Well, anyway, we're passing around notes, and Miss Reed comes around. Listen, Mr. Fields, what are you doing passing around notes while I'm trying to teach a class? I'm like, well, I'm bored. boring as yeah, fuck. And she, and, she, and she was like, and she was like, well, you can leave this classroom right now and get suspended, or you can stay in this classroom and go to detention. I'm like, Miss Reed, you're my favorite teacher. I love science, but if you give me detention, I'm not going. I'd say I'm kind of a greeter, but I'm kind of family too. A bunch of the kids that like to talk to me and hang around with me. I, I'm saying kids like half my age, 20 year olds. They, they adopt me as mom. And I was thinking to myself, why do I have detention? I haven't done anything wrong. So you know what I did? I stopped doing all of my work, okay? <laughs> I didn't do fucking shit. I went into the class and I put my head down. They won't say it out loud or anything else, but there's a couple of them that look at me like mom, so I kind of fit into that role. I've had five kids, you know, my youngest is 21, my oldest is 30. I have four grandkids right now. Haven't seen any of them. So it finally came to the point where I met the principal. So I'm sitting here like this, sleeping on my desk, and this motherfucker comes in, takes that big ass fucking textbook off the yep. table. Slams it on the table. What am? Yep. Fucking. He didn't hit the table. He hit me. They yeah. want you to have ID. I jumped up out that chair and fucking knocked him one right in his fucking mouth. Well, Zach is my brother personally. That dude is funny. He is. Fun. I, I like waking up, and Zach is right there knowing that I got a brother. That's with me right now. That's why you don't ever see them three. Ah, bitches! <laughs> my brother were killed by the law enforcement, and my cousin was killed because of gangs. I miss them so much. I miss them. I was flipping the fuck out. I'm not allowed on any public school grounds in California. <laughs> ever. Damn. Ever. Zach is my guy. He's cool, man. He helped me out when I first came here, and he was like, you, I like you. And I'm like, I like you too, bro. And we've been cool ever since. <laughs> Metal changing temperatures faster than the water. <laughs> Did you take my cigarette? Yep. <sighs> man, I can't have nothing around here. No, go ahead. <laughs> You know Casey and Timmy, my older brother taught them that it was cool to run up to me as fast and hard as they could, power slide, and punch me in the balls. I can't have any more kids besides the one I have, and I don't feel anything if you punch me in the testicles. So good luck! <laughs> you don't feel pain in your testicles. I don't feel pain in this foot. Because I've been kicked in it so many times because everybody keep thinking that's my weak spot. No, buddy. It's actually my strong spot. <laughs> All through my life, people that thought just because I walk like this, that that foot is my weakness. At one time, it used to be, but so many people have tried to kick me in there, actually have kicked me in there, that I felt pain when it first started, but I'm just so used to getting kicked there. Doesn't mind it, mind it no more. And I'm gonna do to you what I would do to anybody else that throws a kick at me. I'm gonna grab See, your you foot. You think you're invincible, bro? I'm not invincible, yeah, but I'm gonna grab thinking. that foot. That's when what you you're take thinking. It. So let's go out there and test the theory, or it can get dropped right now. You wanna go test that theory? Yes. I won't put you to sleep, but you will attack. I love music. Actually, I am a beat creator. I have been making beats since I was young. Started getting good, everybody recognized and was like, you're doing good, man, you should keep going. Okay, kept going. You can hear one of my instrumentals. It has a piano solo. Ha ha ha, and the beat drops. Damn!
middle school, I got tired of getting bullied. So I'm like, okay, I'm crippled. I'm like, okay, so I'm gonna get my fighting skills better. Join wrestling. Learn how to wrestle. Win some, you lose some. But you live to fight another day. Never give up, nigga. That, my friend, is a professional wrestling match. I smile a lot because I try to hide all the pain that's inside of me. That's all I do every day. We do have a moral code. As warped as it may seem at times, there is a moral code out here. It may be a little anarchical out here. Everybody lives by their own rules. As long as it doesn't interfere with me or affect my life negatively, adults can do as they please. As skewed as it may seem to the rest of the world, um, we have a very strong moral fiber. Your neighbor waking you up at three o'clock in the morning when you're sound asleep? Then go live in a residential community where there's a fucking bedtime and call oh, So I don't give a fuck for tweakers any more than I give a fuck for alcoholics. I banned that shit I'm from my I'm not condoning cafe. the bad the bad behavior of people, but I'm saying you can't categorize someone by the substance they do. You know what? Yes, I can. Because if they know they have a problem, they have the power to stop it. I, I respect Rob. He's he's trying to do well over there. He started getting tired of the tweakers, so he started running them out, you know, and and everybody liked liked him for that. You know, they stay up all night yelling and screaming and everything, and he was getting tired of it. We have a big problem with meth addicts out here. Americans call them tweakers because they like to tweak with things. Uh, stealing things from other people, you know, they're, they're very desperate drug addicts. And the police uh, can't do much about that and they're not much worried about it either. It's very hard to get the police to uh, respond out here. can't make rules in the place where there's no rules. You even have a sign. So you got the fucking right to wake me up at three in the morning. Fuck you, even, you. You even have a sign in front of the internet cafe. We remember freedom. Freedom is not the right to fuck your neighbors. A lot of people didn't like what they saw here personally and refused to see the whole picture. And they go away thinking that Slab City's nothing but a bunch of drug addicts. And it's not that, it's an artist community. There are unfortunately a lot of alcoholics and drug users here. Um, that's the type of place it is when you don't have to pay rent. You're keeping us all up over here because you got all these fucking tweakers over here and y'all are always up all fucking night. Well, guess what? You're gonna fucking leave it. If you don't like it, shit's gonna start happening. Come on, Rob. I'll be there in a minute. There may sometimes be a lot of yelling and screaming, but you know what? It's better to yell and scream and get it out than to hold it in, let it build up and let it come to the point where you harm somebody. And I understand what you're saying, Rob, and I apologize. I, I, I get it, and I agree. But how can you take someone's side and let them come in when it's not his fucking situation and he's done more damage to the slabs than anybody fucking here? Zach has had just like a lot of the people here, has had a very fucked up life. I have a chance, given time, to show Zach that there are better ways. He could have walked up behind that guy and put him in the fucking grave. He didn't. The Zach that I met two and a half years ago would have just fucking taken a club and beaten the guy over the head. Dude, I'll beat the shit out of you with both of these coffee thermoses and then pour them on you. 
I can't say nothing bad about him. All the people be like, oh, he's this, oh, he's that. You know, I've been with Zach ever since I've been here, and I haven't seen him do nothing wrong unless it's for a reason. You have to re respect people out here, or they're not going to respect you at all. Hey! Look at these douchebags. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look, it's a couple of bucks. Look at the tapeworms. This is an alpha community. Everybody up here is an alpha. Um, and of course, when two alphas come together, they're eventually going to butt heads if they don't have their space. <laughs> But we do live, we do for the most part live in harmony. Rob doesn't like violence at the cafe. We don't induce violence at the cafe. We try to stop it as much as we can. Cafe, um, the only thing I allow is pot. Anything harder and they get tossed out. I don't even allow alcohol anymore. If they want to go get drunk, they can go somewhere fucking else. I try not to be negative as much as I can. When negativity happens, when there's fights and stuff like that, I try to forget those. I remember them, but I try not to harbor on them. And I try to look at the chirping of the birds, you know, the uh, beauty of the desert. I try to remember something beautiful in that situation, and that's what I try to live my life by. Sorry, Rob. I accept your apology. I know that you none of none of what you did was intentional. Well, Rob, I gotta tell you, he, he's one of the wisest men I've met, actually. Uh, the way he brings himself and the way he, like if somebody gets an argument, the way he diffuses it and the way he words things. And he loves to conversate with people. He loves learning about people and he just loves people. Rob's a great person. Steve? Yeah. I'm just peeking in to see if Shriek is in here. Yes, came in. She, Shrieka did come in. Yes. Shrieka, are you in here, baby? No, she's not in here. Shrieka! A lot of us have got our dogs and we get attached to them. The cafe has got their own dogs. They were puppies that were born together of the same litter. If we didn't have all the dogs, then it would be a lot of problems around here. Because whenever I get angry, all I do is pick up my puppy and look at her face and all my anger leaves. Gentle. Good. You teach it gentle. Yes, you teach it gentle, Kato. We protect children, we protect animals. We treat our animals better than we treat ourselves. Me and my dog, we usually spend all day here with nobody coming around. I enjoy the solitude of just being alone and being able to relax. Yeah, I love it out here. I just love it. If I had one wish, I wish I could find me a, a nice woman. Uh, I even posted it online on Facebook. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm looking for a nice woman to stay with me, do the cooking, cleaning, do my laundry. <laughs> and everybody said, you want a maid, you don't want a fucking wife. <laughs> 
tomorrow's my birthday. I want to be 65 years old. And I figured, well, it would be nice to settle down a little bit. And it would be nice to have a woman to share that with, you know. And now I'm getting all sentimental and shit, you know. <laughs> yeah. Shrika. Shrika. You get to know the animals. You get to know them by name. You know, they'll run out, they'll talk to you, they'll say hi to you in the mornings, and they go on to their journey of the day. There you are, baby. Hi. Come here. Come on. You had me worried, baby. Come on up. Yeah. Oh, yes. Hi, Gator. Mm -hmm. Yes, hi, Gator. You had me worried, baby. Well then, I gotta avoid the police until April 30th. Is it traffic tickets? It's traffic court, it's not a ticket, bro. It's a fucking evading arrest, and I also destroyed- He was evading a, arrest? I destroyed a cop car with an F-350. Hey, fuck off! You're gonna come play right next to me when I'm drinking coffee. Piss off. Go. Go. <laughs> Go, motherfucker! And that's how I got caught up, and that's why I'm going through all this stupid bullshit now. Today is my brother Zach's birthday, and he is turning 19, and we're going to celebrate it by doing everything under the sun that cannot get us in trouble. While still having fun at the same time. I at least have to not go to jail until after my birthday. I will eventually one day be leaving. Um, there'll come a day where I won't be able to go up on the roof anymore to move the panels around. Hey Zach, you want to come here? Yo. Yeah, come here, I need your... Fix this a little bit. Now that we've got this back, we can't have the cord hanging down, so I need that. And when that day comes, that, that will definitely be the day that I leave. Um, who knows, it, it may be sooner, but right now, this is home. to get so hammered tonight. I don't know what we're doing, but we're gonna have fun tonight. We are, the raids is a very special place. I advise everybody to come to the range at Slab City, please. <laughs> Saturdays, like tonight, is one of the biggest nights of the week because we all gather up on the stage that was set up by Builder Bill. And it's called the range. That's when the alcohol flows through and I do have my good times on Saturday nights. Sundays are my day off. I don't do nothing. Somebody comes over and wants something done, I'll tell them I'll do it on Monday because I've, I've usually got a hangover. It's fantastic. I just go out there and dance, dance my heart out. And I'm better when I come back on Sunday. A whole better person again.
hard and we play hard out here too. Different tones, different pitches, different instruments. I've seen all of the way from a cello to a flute to harmonica playing the blues up there on that range. It is a range of music. listen to a new musician for half an hour to an hour, but that's pretty much it. This place keeps me pretty busy, and by the time that's going, I'm pretty tired. And just want to sit back and relax. I'm as human as everybody else. I make my stupid mistakes. But I do tend to be self-reflective. Think about, you know, geez, what would I just do what I want to really do? Don't stop learning. Don't stop growing. Work harder each day to be a better person than you were yesterday and never rest on your laurels. For your own personal growth, you need to constantly learn. That's the mistake too many people make, is resting on their accomplishments. You gotta keep doing something new. My mother worked for the same employer for 32 years. My sister is months away from putting in her 30th year with a single employer. Couldn't do it. Maybe if I was an astronaut for NASA, yes. I plan on going to the moon before I die. Take care of the internet and be getting on and off without complications. Yeah. 